Hi, I'm Genevieve Cohn, the cooking editor of the LA Times, and I'm here today with these two masterful chefs, and they're going to show us how to make onigiri, which are Japanese rice balls. Onigiri is a very um, common and traditional and household thing that Japanese people love to eat. My first love of it comes from my grandma making it for us. I always associate onigiris with fun and family. It's a comfort food for me. Yeah, definitely. It's always been about just some kind of fun event with family or just hanging out at the house watching TV all day and just, you know, my mom would make it all the time. I think with onigiri, it's one of those things where people have so many experiences throughout their lives with it in Japan that I feel like it's very subjective of what you think is going to be the best one. Of course, the rice quality has to be good, the temperature has to be good, the fillings all have to be, you know, really well thought out on some level. But I feel like to make it the best of the best of the best is very subjective. So the rice that we use at Ennaka is a blend of Japanese rice and California Japanese rice. So two cups. So your first run of water, like the moment it covers, strain it out right away. And then I generally like to wash, the, rinse out the water at least four times. I like to see how clear the water becomes. When I do rice, I like to put the water in immediately after I wash it. Because what kind of pot is this? This is, it's actually really popular right now in Japan and they're called donabes. This one is particularly made for cooking rice. The lining of it really helps so that the rice doesn't get too sticky and it also has these lines that tell you where to put the water. So I'm gonna put the rice in. So one of the most important things about the water is it has to be filtered cold water. So this is pre-measured at 350? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then usually I like to soak for at least 30 minutes. I always like to look at rice and have it be shiny. You know how it's like shiny? Right. Mm -hmm. you gotta kind of fluff it up a little bit. Very gently. You don't want to crush any of the kernels up. Just a little bit to cover. This is uh, Japanese sea salt, arajio. So you put a little bit here and then you grab a little bit on your tip. And then just, so it's already kind of shaped. So from this point, you just like pack it a little bit so it doesn't break. Then, depending on which nori, I'm gonna just use this one for the mentaiko or the sides. This one is the bonito with uh, soy sauce, mirin, and sesame seed. So I'm gonna sort of just mix it around like this. Because when you're doing a mix style, it's really hard to do the rice ball shape by hand. So I'm going to add a little pinch of salt to this one instead of having it on my hands. And then after you have it into the shape and you pinch it and you go sideways, then you can shape it sideways. So depending on what your favorites are, I think, Grandma will make it <laughs> to your liking. <laughs> what I like about onigiri is when the rice has that wonderful chew and the temperature is just slightly warm, not hot, not cold, like room temperature for me. And then the balance of the filling and the rice is important for me because I don't like it when it's too salty or too blunt. How about you? For me, the, the nori on the outside is kind of critical. Like that I is. need a little bit of that crisp crunch when you first bite into it. Yes, and the flavor of the nori. And the fragrance. Mm -hmm. 